devil just let him fall to the ground. Lord, may we have joy and peace in your word, Lord God. May you be pleased. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're at John chapter 1. And we left off at verse 21. We're going to come out of that verse. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? That's what we've been working on, Elijah. And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? That's Moses. And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? Now, they want a name. Now, notice what they say. They say, Come, tell us who you are and what you are, so we can go back to Jerusalem and say, you know, this is the end. They say that, you know, they were, the people here, that they were looking forward to the cross of Jesus. The priests did not come. They sent ambassadors. They sent their employees. Go find out what this guy is doing. It's not worthy for us to go check it out. If they were looking forward to the cross, those priests would have been down there themselves, ready. All right, here we go. We're ready. This is the forerunner. And they weren't. They sent down people. Go, go find out what's going on down there, will you? And come back to us. And said, well, give us an answer. Give us a name so we can go back to Jerusalem and tell them. So, verse 23, he, John, John the Baptist says, I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. Uh, that's Isaiah. That's Greek for Isaiah. And John the Baptist shows up and he's quoting the Bible. Look at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. And he's quoting the Bible to them that's supposed to know the Bible. John the Baptist, as we've learned about Moses and Elijah, John the Baptist was foretold in the scriptures we're going to read now. Now Isaiah has 66 books, or 66 chapters. The Bible has 66 chapters, books. Chapter 40 would go with your Matthew. The 40th book in the Bible is Matthew. And 40, Isaiah 40, John the Baptist shows up, and the period of Bible would be Matthew. I don't think it's coincidental. I think it's the Lord inspiring the scriptures for us. What would be the 40th book, not yet written, I know there was no chapters and verse markings back in this time, but this. The chapter and verse numbers are not inspired, but they're very awfully close to being inspiration. So, verse 3, chapter 40, The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way to the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. That's John the Baptist, for our God. Jesus is coming. Quote that verse to a Jehovah Witness and watch him, watch him blow a light bulb. Mm -hmm. And this ask him, say first, well, who, who is John? Who, who is John the Baptist, the forerunner of? Jesus, really? You mean he was to come before Jesus and proclaim to the people, "Here comes Jesus." Correct? Okay. Then just take over Isaiah 40, verse three, and says, "Prepare the highway for God." God is Jesus. Jesus is God. And. They won't like you. And they'll have some other way, some other thing, you know. But the Bible says that Jesus is God. Back to John chapter 1. So John is a forerunner. He is not the Messiah. He's the preparer, as the Scriptures say. The Scriptures announce, before I send my son, before I send the Messiah, I'm going to send to you Somebody who's going to prepare. I'm going to send somebody who's going to get you ready. So, uh, verse 23 says, 
He said, John the Baptist said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And then we, we read that. So, like I said, Isaiah, that's the Greek form, the Greek spelling of Isaiah. Uh, and they which were sent of the Pharisees. Now the Pharisees are the strict, that's who Paul was of. The Pharisees followed the law to a T. And they didn't go to the right and they didn't go to the left of it. And if there was anybody to know that the Messiah was coming, it would be the Pharisees. The, the Pharisees also the ones that put all these birth. You gotta wash your hands before you eat. You can go so far only. You can do this, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. They were the strict set. And they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptize, why baptize, why baptizest thou? If thou be not the Christ, nor Elias, nor that prophet. All right, you're not the Messiah, you're not Elijah, and you're not the prophet. What on earth are you doing here, Baptist, baptizing? This is the first time baptism shows up in the Bible. What are you doing putting people in the water? He just told him. he says... The Bible says, the scriptures say, I am one that cries in the wilderness, make straight away the Lord. This is what God told John the Baptist. Now we're, we're going to look into a little thing is here. He goes, I'm not the Christ. They acknowledge that. I'm not a lion. They acknowledge that, verse 25. Neither that prophet, Moses. The servants of the Pharisees acknowledge, you're not these three men. Those three men are going to show up with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration later. John answered said, I baptize with water. But there stands one among you whom ye know not. Alright, so let's look at baptism. We come to baptism. Let's see what the Bible says about baptism. Because there's all forms of baptism. There's sprinkled. There's baby or infant baptism. There's immersed. There's baptism. There's John the Baptist. Every religion has their own specific means of baptism. They just had this thing with Cor uh, 19 that there was a Catholic priest out and he was shooting people with a water gun, baptizing them. Well, let's see if that's scriptural. I had one time, I went to a Catholic funeral and the Catholic priest had one of those hair coloring Miss Carol squirt bottles and he was squirting everybody with a squirt bottle. Let's see if that is scriptural. Because me, I want to know what the Bible says, and if the Bible don't say it, I'm not going to do it. If the Bible don't say it, I'm not going to believe it. So we're going to look at baptism today. Matthew chapter 3. Now baptism shows up for the first time in John, where we're reading, but the first time it shows up is in Matthew 3. Now Naaman was put under the water seven times for his leprosy. But Naaman dunked himself. No one dunked him. So that's not really a baptism, though it's a baptism. But I have not seen anybody, I have not heard of, there's probably out there somewhere, there's probably somewhere among the people who if I go out in the river and dunk myself. But I have not personally ever heard of that. But John shows up with, with this thing called baptism. What is it? It's like Noah going out and saying, Hey, get in the ark, it's going to rain. They didn't know what rain was. It did not rain. Until God opened up the heavens. So Matthew chapter 3, verse 6. And they were baptized of him, John the Baptist, in the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were acknowledging their sins. And being baptized. So tell me, when you bring an infant to somewhat to a Protestant Catholic church, when was the last time you heard an infant say, "Oh, oh. I don't know what sins you talk. I haven't done any sins yet." I'll tell you where that infant announces his sins. Are you ready for this? That's what a godfather and a godmother is. 
When a godfather or godmother stands in for that infant, that's not the person. They were confessing their sins, not someone else's sins. And that infant were to die, that infant has no knowledge of sin yet and would go to glory. Verse 7, but when they saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees, that's the other group, come to be come to his baptism, he said unto them, You ought to be nice, preacher. You ought to be well beloved, preacher. Oh, generation of vipers. Well, that's kind of cruel, but called, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, the fruits meet for repentance. You better show your repentance. That's salvation. Today. We don't do works for salvation today, but we do works after we're saved. James, we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today, and we're saved not of works, we say any man both, but after we say, we're to show our love for God by doing things for God. Bring forth fruits, meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham our father, I am a Catholic, I'm a Pentecostal, I grew up in this church, I... That don't mean nothing. For I say unto you that God is able these stones to raise up the children of Abraham. Now also the axe laid to the root of the trees, therefore every tree which bring forth not good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. What do you think fire is there? Hell. <laughs> I don't, listen, I had Christians that, I don't like you preaching hell. John the Baptist is preaching hell. I don't like how you mock people's religion. You generation of vipers. That don't sound sweet and wonderful and cozy. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But there comes after me a mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy. This would be Jesus. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And with fire. What was the fire in verse 10? Hell. The Pentecostals say, we're baptized with the Holy Ghost and with the Spirit of fire. You better not be baptized with the Spirit of fire, because that's hell. He told you in verse 10. You're either baptized with the Holy Ghost of God, adopted by God, and a child of God through Jesus Christ, or you're baptized in hell. And you can't have both. Holy Ghost and fire. No. You're taking that verse out of context. And the Pentecostals will run to verse 11 and say, I'm baptized in fire, I'm baptized with the, with the Holy Ghost. That fire, if you reject God, you, you don't get the Holy Ghost, you get hell. If you go with God, you'll get the Holy Ghost and you won't get fire. But that's John the Baptist's message. He's preaching as baptism to the religious people, the Pharisees and Sadducees. They're showing them, what are you doing? What, what gives you, what on earth are you doing? You shut up, you vipers. Oh, you want to be baptized with me? You better show that you repented. John would not put anybody in that water unless they proved they repented. How's that? You pray, you pay a Catholic or you pray, pay a Protestant, uh, uh, can't think of it now, a uh, Protestant, and they'll put you under the water. John says, oh, if I ever have a church, before I put them in the water, I better be assured that they have trusted Jesus Christ and nothing else. Because baptism can't save you. And there are churches that teach if you're baptized, you are well with God. No, you're not. Baptism doesn't save you. Baptism is a public before the church and before your family and friends, I, am, I have received Jesus Christ as my Savior. I am going to die to Christ. I'm going to go under the water. You take a dead body. You bury it in the, in the ground. You bury that body in the water. And I'm going to come out as a new creature. That's what you're telling me. The thief that died on the cross that believed on Jesus was never baptized. And Jesus said, today that shall be with me in paradise. Mark chapter 1. Never can baptize save. But baptism has a reference to, it has a reference to repentance. And a baby cannot repent. 
and a godfather, godmother, whatever you want, cannot stand in that child's presence. Because that infant, that infant was born in sin, but that infant hasn't done any sin. Besides wake up mother at 3 o'clock in the morning, but... Mark 1, 4. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach baptism of repentance. See that repentance. When was the last time you went to a Catholic, I, I can't get Protestant, can't get that word out today. When was the last time you went to a Protestant Catholic service for a baptism and they preached to you? Repentance. If they ever did, I would fall down dead in shock. You can't get baptized unless you get preaching and you've repented for the remissions of sin. And there went out of him all the land of Judah, Israel, and they of Jerusalem, Jewish, and were all baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. The first baptism of the Bible is the nation of Israel coming to the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had not begun his ministry at all yet. And I tell you one thing too, I tell you another thing three times. The Baptist church does not come from John the Baptist because John the Baptist dies before Jesus dies and Jesus was buried and Jesus rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The Baptist church is built upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. John dies before that. John dies and beheaded while Jesus is still in the ministry. Look at verse 8. I indeed baptize you with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Notice he doesn't say fire here. He's speaking to people, you're believing. God will give you the Holy Ghost for your belief. And it came to pass those days that Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan. Okay? If do you believe that Jesus Christ was sinless? Do you believe he was sinless? All right, if baptism takes away your sin, why was Jesus baptized in verse 9? It says right there, Jesus came of Nazareth, Galilee, and was baptized of John. The sinless perfection of God was baptized. So baptism can't be of sin, and if you say baptism is for sin, you just call Jesus a sinner, you stand in those shoes, I won't. But I'll say that Jesus Christ was saved. I mean, Jesus Christ was the Savior. Jesus Christ is God. He never sinned. You say, well, why was He baptized? He started His ministry. He'd come out before all the nation of Israel. He'd come out for the forerunner of John the Baptist. And He's being anointed. He's being, being ordained. He's being called for. Okay, now I'm going to, bid, I'm going to start my ministry. And he's being baptized in the death, burial, and resurrection for later on when he will die and be buried and raised again the third day. He's not baptized for his sin. He's without sin. So, when you talk to somebody, oh, I'm saved by my baptism, did Jesus need to be saved? Well, no. Well, he was baptized. Well, i got to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Why did Mark leave out the fire then? If it's so important, Matthew said the fire, Mark said, oh, 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 look at verse 10. And straightway coming up out of the water. How do you come up and out of the water? Is that a water gun? Is that being sprinkled? Is that taking a, a, a labor of water and dumping it? No, Jesus is in the water. John the Baptist is taking them and he's immersing them biblically, in the water. And you come out of the water. So if somebody's baptizing you with a fire hydrant, with a water gun, with a bottle of water, with a, with a labor, whatever, however they do, and they're not putting you under that water after you have believed on Jesus and repented of your sins, you're not being scriptural. Jesus was sinless, he was baptized, and he come out of the water. Luke chapter 3. 
We see Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All four Gospels have the reference to the baptism, and yet you only find the birthday of Jesus once. So where is the priority? Luke chapter 3, verse 3. Luke 3, 3. And it came, he came unto all the country of Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remissions of sin. Now we're talking to a Jewish group of people. Jesus Christ has not died, he has not been buried, he has not been resurrected from the grave. So this is a different baptism and then the baptism after the Gentiles start getting saved. And he came to all the countries who were preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, there he is, the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. We read that. Every valley shall be filled, with, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, second advent. The crooked shall be made straight, and the rough way shall be made smooth. Look, he's already preaching the first and second advent, verse 4 and 5. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized in him, O generation of vipers, you mean cruel preachers, you ain't got enough love. Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Uh, you're preaching this. Bring forth the fruits that worthy of repentance, and, be, uh, and begin not to say to yourself, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, God is able these stones to raise up the children of Abraham. And now the axe is laid to the root of the trees, every tree therefore bringing forth not good fruit, hew down, cast into the fire. Hell. There it is. And the people ask, well, what shall we do? They say, well, what do we do? What's these works? In verse 16, John answers, saying unto them, I did baptize you with water, but one mightier, Jesus, than I, cometh. The latch of the two shoes I'm not worthy to lose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. What's the fire? Verse 9. Hell. You don't get both. Who stand in his hand, he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat unto his gardener, heaven. But the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. What is fire unquenchable? Hell. Show Luke to your charismatic friend, because they won't look at that one. There it is. And I've been told by the charismatic, oh, have you been baptized with the, with the Holy Ghost? Yeah, I've been baptized. I'm, I'm a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. I've got the Holy Spirit indwelling in me. I, I, I am forever God. I'm a child of God. Have you been baptized with fire? Absolutely not, because Jesus saved me from my sins. And they blink at you like, what? Mm -hmm. And then I will say, have you studied the Word of God and rightly divide, you know? You can't, you, you're not going to get both of them. You're either going to go to heaven by Jesus Christ or you're going to go to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. Baptism is not for salvation. Baptism is a public witness. I have received Jesus Christ. And a lot of times, most preachers ought to say, I'm talking about Bible-believing Baptist preachers, have you received, somehow say, have you trusted Jesus as your Savior? Have you put your faith in Jesus? And if they say, no, okay, time to get out of the water. We need to, talk. usually they'll talk to the person beforehand. I've been in church one time where the person said, yeah, you baptized me three, three times this year. And it ought to stop right then and there. There's one baptism. One, you don't get baptized over and over. Now my wife Tracy was baptized twice because she said she was young and she really didn't know if she was saved. And she went to another church and got baptized after she really knew of her heart she trusted Christ. 
That's purposeful. See, we were called at one time, we were called Anabaptists. You ever hear that expression? Mm -hmm. Anabaptists mean rebaptizers. Because the Catholic Church would say, you're taking our power and you're rebaptizing them. You see, they had been baptized as infants. And the Baptists were coming along and rebaptizing them in faith. No, we were not rebaptized because your baptism of the devil and hell and fire. They have trusted on Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they are doing the one baptism by faith. But the Catholic Church got it all messed up. We're, we're, we're Anabaptists. Well, we don't rebaptize another. We get baptized once. We don't get saved again. So you must have belief first, Matthew 28. And there are some Baptist churches out there today that got the baptism all messed up. Matthew 28. Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and teach all nations. That's, that's interesting because nations would be the Gentiles too. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And there's some people that they, they have all kinds of problems with that. And there, there's just so many different ways. Some, you know, you know, when the preacher baptizes you properly to the Bible, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the, the Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost. That's all proper. And there's, there's other ways of doing it. There's other ways of saying it. So there's other ways of not saying it. Matthew said, the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, or the Holy Ghost. There is a method to it. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And believe me, this is messed up in churches. It's sorry. Matthew 6, I mean, Mark 16, 16. Now, there's no simpler way than Matthew 16, I mean, Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Believe it. Mark says you believe, then you're baptized. He that believeth not shall be damned. He that believeth and is baptized, Holy Spirit, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Fire. There it is. You don't get both. Mark says, no, nope, you don't get both of them. Mark says, you have to be, you must believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What do I do next? The Philippian jailer was baptized afterwards. Scripture. That's what the Bible puts forth about baptism. And the devil just messes it all up. I've dealt with people. Do you know where you're going to go when you die? I'm going to heaven. How are you going to heaven? I was baptized. No. Alright, let me ask you stupid question number two. When were you baptized? When I was a baby. Oh, I must ask stupid question number three. Do you remember it? No. What if they lie to you? Supposedly, my mom told me that her water for me broke when she was in the grocery store. My grandma said, no, that's not true. I don't know what to believe. There's a complicated story there. 
You mean to tell me you're doing something what the Bible says to do and you don't remember it? I remember... The, now listen, you don't need to know the month, day, and year to be saved, but you better remember the day that you were saved. And your baptism better come after you have received Christ as your Savior. You must believe and be baptized and shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be getting knows how and he that believeth not, there's not even baptism mentioned in the passage. Don't even bother. If you don't believe, don't even bother going to get baptized. Because it ain't gonna do nothing for you. And when you're in hell roasting in torment, you wish you had that little bit of water that you were baptized in. And when I'm on the streets and I preach at the farmer's market, I'll ask you, what denomination of baptism are you? You see, there's a denomination. Are you salt water baptism? Are you fresh water baptism? Are you sprinkled baptism? Are you poured baptism? Are you dunk baptism? <laughs> Yes. Did you water gun baptism? Well, what kind of water baptism salvation are you? And it all leads you to one place. It leads you to hell. I, as a, Rome, as a Polish Roman Catholic, I don't remember, but I was infant baptized. Probably by a priest that could not be trusted with other children. I mean what I said. That didn't do nothing for me. I was going to hell. April 25th, 1987, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. I believed on Him. My name is written in, in the Lamb's Book of Life. The Holy Spirit came with me. God adopted me. I'm going to heaven. Set, eight days after that, I was baptized. I don't, even know, I don't remember what the date of my baptism. I came afterward. And I stood before the church. And I stood before the, the people. And I said, I believe Jesus Christ is my Savior. I'm going to die. I'm going to get buried. I'm coming up as a new creature. And boy, did people start running when I came up as a new creature. Because I have not stopped and I have not shut up. It's too bad many Christians don't come out of that water as a new creature. It's too bad. Maybe baptism wasn't explained to them. You're dying to sell. What do you do with a dead body? You put it under. Imagine going to a, to a funeral... And you're at the graveyard, all right? Imagine this. You got the dead, and you just throw dirt out. All right, it's done. No, it's not. You got to bury him. Or he's going to be start stinking, as Martha said. Acts chapter 2, Acts 2.38. Now, this is a passage in the Scriptures. This is the holiness people, Acts 2.38. Now, let, I'm not going to get into a big discussion about it, but Acts chapter 3, 2, is all Jewish people. It's not a Gentile amongst the group. And we'll, before we get to Acts 2.38, we'll read Acts 2.36. Before we read Acts 2.38. Acts 2.36. Paul has not been saved yet. Paul has not been given the, 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 the revelation of the new gospel. Paul has not been given the revelation of Gentiles are going to come into the body of Christ. Paul is a Pharisee and he's killing Christians right now. Acts 2.36 Therefore let all the house of the church know it surely. That's not what it says. Let therefore all the house of Israel. Acts chapter 2 is an Israeli, it's a Jewish, it's a Hebrew, it's an Israel passage. It is not Gentile. Don't go run to Acts chapter 2 when you're dealing with the Gentiles for salvation. Know it surely that God had made this, that same Jesus whom ye crucified. Now I know we say Christ died because of my sin, but I didn't personally crucify Christ. The, the Jewish people did. And this is a matter of days, I think 50 days. This is 50 days. I think 50 days. 
if it's 50 days after the, the death of Jesus. So this is not too long ago. The crucifixion of Jesus is still on their thoughts a, a month or so afterwards. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, the heart touches, and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men, brethren, what shall we do? All right, Acts 16. No, wait a minute, don't go to Acts 16. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. No, Peter does not say that. Peter said to them, then Peter said to them, repent and be baptized. You know how you deal with, you know how you know you deal with a heretic? You've got, to be, you've got to repent and be baptized. They can't say baptized. Listen to them. Listen to a heart. They will say baptized. But, but, but. It's funny. Listen to them. I've heard them. I've laughed at them. They're like, Whoa, what's wrong? Inside joke. Repent and, be, well, repent and be baptized, everyone, in the name of Jesus, for the remission of sin. Yes, Peter said, baptism saves you. But first he said, you got to repent. Notice repentance there. And then he says, be baptized in remission of sin. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Where is the fire? But again, who is Peter's audience? It is the Jewish people. What were the Jewish people doing before Jesus came on the scene? They repented and they were remission their sin and they were being baptized by John's baptism. The only thing Peter knows right now is John's baptism. That's why Peter's doing this baptism. John did it. Maybe I'd do it myself. Peter has had no revelation. Um, I think it's chapter 3. I don't know if I got this one written down. But Acts chapter 3. Let me find this one. Uh, Acts 3, 19. Now that was Peter, we, we saw. In Acts 3.12, it says when Peter saw. So 3.19 is Peter. He's one chapter away from Acts 2.38. You ready? Peter, what, what's the message you preach? Acts 3.19, Repent ye therefore and be converted, and your sins may be blotted out, for the time of refreshing shall come upon the presence of the Lord. Peter would happen to baptism. Where did baptism go? It was there in Acts 2.38. We come one chapter later. Evidently, God had a little talk with Peter. No more of that, Peter. And he's preaching to he's preaching the Jewish people at the Jewish temple, verse number one. And he tells the Jewish people, repent, therefore be converted, and your sins be blotted out. There is no mention of baptism. So we've gone from John preaching, yes, remission of sins, being baptized, and put under the water. Yes. Peter comes up in Acts 2.38. Yeah, remission of sins, baptism. Acts chapter 3. Salvation. Repent, be converted, your sins will be blocked out. No baptism. And what's happened to the fire? When you get baptized, and you get saved. Where's, where's the fire we've been reading about? If it's so important, it's missing. You would think that God thought that fire was so important. You think He would put four, four letters in, so F I R E. You would think God would do that. And yet the Pentecostals are. Fire, baptism of fire, baptism of fire. The holiness people. Uh, I got to get up. Repent and be baptized. That's it. I couldn't remember that. Anymore. These people get stuck on these doctrines. Me, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What about baptism? I mean, you preach at the park. What about that? Let's get them in a Bible-believing church. Let's talk with the pastor. Let's find out about their salvation. And let the, pa the pastor baptize you. I'm not allowed to baptize nobody. I'm not a pastor. I'm an evangelist. Paul said, listen, I, Paul did baptize, but he didn't lead the baptism up to himself. And 
even the scriptures say Jesus didn't baptize it. His disciples did. Acts chapter 8. Let's go a little further. Acts chapter 8, verse 29. Acts chapter 8. Paul's still killing Christians. Paul gets converted in Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 8. A whole different story from Acts 2 and Acts 3. Acts chapter 8, verse 27. In verse 26, the angel speaks to Philip. He says, Philip, i got a job for you. Verse 27. And he rose and went, behold, a man in Ethiopia. You know what a man in Ethiopia is? He's not Jewish. He's a Gentile. Acts chapter 8 is the very first log of the Holy Scriptures on how a Gentile gets saved. And Paul's not even saved himself. Paul, chapter 9, verse 1, he's killing Christians. He's putting Christians in prison. And the angel, verse, angel of the Lord, verse 26, says, Phil, I got an Ethiopian, verse 27. I want you to go down and witness for him. Ethiopian eunuch of great authority under Cadence, the queen of Ethiopia, who had, char who had charge of her treasures, had come to Jerusalem to worship. If I go to Mecca, if I go to Jerusalem, if I go to Salt Lake City, Watch, they ain't going to do it for you. That's not salvation. Was returning, sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah as the prophet. The Ethiopian has a gospel track and he's reading it in this vehicle. And then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to his chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. He's reading that gospel track out loud. You see, how do you know this? He's not going to carry a scroll of Isaiah. And they're not going to let him take the scroll home. If you ever seen a picture of those scrolls, they're huge and wide. And they were, uh, by the Pharisees, they were coveted. They were protected. Nobody just went up to those scrolls and was allowed to see them. Somebody had given him, and it's Isaiah 53. And the reading prophet understands that what thou readest. He said, how can I, except some man guide me? you got to guide them. You don't just give them a Bible. You show them what the Bible said. You don't give them just a gospel track. You tell them what that gospel track is. And he desired to they would come up and sit with him. In the place of the scripture where he read, he was, he was led as a shepherd, as a shepherd, sheep to the slaughter, and like the lamb dumb before the shear, so he opened not his mouth. That's Isaiah 53, 7. And humiliation and judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life was taken from the earth. That's Jesus. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of who speaketh the, the prophet? Of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him vacation Bible school. Well, you got great, this is a great chariot you got. Wow, what kind of wheels you got on this chariot? Man, look at those horses. Those are great horses you got. He began to preach unto him Jesus. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. There it is. That's scripture. And they went on the way. They came to a certain water. Uh-oh. And the eunuch said, See, here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? You got a water dog here. I heard about Jesus. I need, I need to be baptized. The Catholic Church says I need to be baptized. What's wrong with me getting baptized? That's a good question. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. 
Bill said, you're not getting baptized. I am not going to baptize you unless you believe on Jesus Christ. And he answered said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded it, by the way, verse 37 is removed from Bibles. There is no verse 37 in the Bible. This is what a modern Bible said. What does hinder me to be baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both in the water. Modern Bibles take after the holiness people. Modern Bibles take after the Catholic. Modern Bibles take after the Protestant. What hinders you be? Nothing hinders you from being baptized. Give me ten bucks, I'll put you under the water. Modern Bible removed. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That's what's wrong with modern Bible. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. They went down both of them into the water. Philip, said, Philip did not baptize him until he believed, until he believed, until he believed Jesus. What have we been reading through all the passages, even the old passages of the, of the baptism? Believe, believe, repent, repent. Where is the fire, Philip? Why didn't you send him on fire? Fire has been missing. Fire would have been that the old man didn't say, I believe on Jesus, and would have been baptized way modern Bibles. He would have got the baptism of fire, not the Holy Spirit. Now, Romans 6 3. Romans 6 3. Don't tell. We are opening in our Bibles, aren't we? I'm not giving you a church pamphlet. I'm not giving you a missal. I'm not giving you another book of the testimony of Jesus. I'm giving you what the Bible says. So if there's any problems, the problem's with the Bible. Uh, Romans 6, 3. Romans 6, 3. Now, this is the trouble that the Mormons get into. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized unto Jesus Christ, I was baptized in the name of Jesus, were baptized unto his death. Mormons believe the baptism of death. You baptize your relatives. No. Baptism of death is, hey world, hey church, hey fellow Christians, I'm dying to this old man. And what you do with a dead body, you bury him. You're going to bury me out of water. When the preacher pulls me out, I'm going to come out as a new person. I'm going to live for Jesus Christ. You know what you do when you get saved and you're baptized and you go out in the world? You have ruined your testimony, your baptism. You come out of water, resurrection. I'm coming out as a new man. I'm going to live for Jesus Christ. You don't go baptizing dead people. It ain't going to do them no good. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. So the Catholic Church and the Mormons is you can pay them to baptize your dead relative. Why don't you just give me the money and I won't baptize no way. I'll just, I'll just steal your money just outright. <laughs> I, I say that sometimes people on some when they're buying lottery tickets. Just give me the money. Okay? I'll put it to better use. Colossians 2.12 Buried with him in baptism. There it is again. Wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. Listen, that preacher don't hold you under water. He brings you out of the water. And what's he bring you out of water? So you can live. Try that with a dead person. It ain't going to happen. And that, he'd bring you out of order for a newness of life that, all right, you're a new person now. I mean, isn't it the fact is that your first birth, it wasn't the things that they would say about the woman is her water broke and then you're born. When you go in that water, you know, the water broke and now you're born. You're newborn. You're a new creature. That's what Jesus said to Nicodemus. You must be born again. I go back to my mother. No, no, you don't go back to your mother. 
The first birth is of water, the second birth is of spirit. So, Acts 8.12 again. Back to Acts 8.12. Now we're going to look at baptism of the believer. And this is important. We already looked at it. Again, this verse is removed out of Bible. Oh, in Acts 12, there's another one. Acts chapter 8, verse 12. I was thinking of another verse. Acts 8, 12. Baptism of the believer. But when they believe, Philip's preaching. Well, we, we got a movie. We, you want to watch a movie in our church? That's not preaching. Well, we got games. We got toys. We've got red teams and blue teams. That's not preaching. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Don't get mad at me. I'm just saying what the Bible says. You're the one that's doing wrong, and you're mad because I'm doing right. I'm doing what the Bible says, and the Holy Spirit is convicting your soul. When they believe, Philip's preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized. When they believe, when they believe the preaching, they believe the name of Jesus, then they were baptized. Baptism came after preaching and after belief in the preaching. Read the black and white lettering and words. I'll stand before the same judgment you stand before. I'll get gold, silver, and precious stones. You'll get wood, hay, or stone. Plain and simple. Acts chapter 8, 38. This is the one I think I was up. Acts 8, 38. This is the one we moved out of modern Bibles. We read this. In Acts 8, 37. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then verse 38. They stopped the chariot and they went down and they were baptized. Belief came first. If you got a modern Bible, the belief, verse 37, has been removed. Now you can stop me anytime when we see fire show up, okay? When you see fire, raise your hand, okay, so stop, there's a fire. Stop me. And we'll look at it. Acts chapter 9, verse 18. This is Paul. Paul has met Jesus on the road. Paul has believed on Jesus that he met on the road. Paul has been made blinded by Jesus he met on the road. Paul is at uh, Antiochus' Antioch, Antioch, house, praying to Jesus. So 918. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scaled. And he received sight forthwith, arose, and was baptized long after, a few days after he believed on Jesus. That's the Apostle Paul. 16.15. Acts 16.15. You can't get this wrong because you're going to damn people's souls. That's okay, though. I'll give you someone paying Acts 16, 15. Don't want to turn the AC down a little bit? <laughs> it's good then. Acts 16, 15. Alright, Acts 16, 15. When she was baptized in her household, they saw the saying, if we have been judged. So... Here's a woman who has believed on God through the preaching, Acts 16, and after belief, a woman was baptized. A woman. Don't forbid a woman who gets saved, well, you can't be baptized because you're a woman. This woman is a remarkable woman. She told the disciples, I want to take care of you, I want to feed you, I want to... I mean, you do know that there's some religions out there that are prejudiced against females. You do know such uh, religions such as the Muslims are, are against females. Okay, I didn't know if you know that 
some people are prejudiced. You know, I just want you to see that a woman was baptized. Acts 16.33. Acts 16.33. And we'll look at verse 30, Acts 16, 30. Now we are well after Paul's salvation. We are well to what God has revealed to Paul. We are definitely dealing with Gentiles. Acts 16, 30, and 31, I preach on the streets in 2020. Acts 16, 30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? I would love to hear that. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What? What did it say? Believe. And thou shalt be saved in thy house. Don't go get me going on that one. And they spake unto him the word of God, the word of God, the word of God. They were preaching and teaching that man. They had an open word of God showing that Philippian jailer what the Bible, what the scripture said. And all that were in his house. There's salvation. There's salvation in his house. And he took them the same hour that night and washed their stripes and was baptized. They believed, his house believed, he washes Paul of the stripes from the wits he got. And then even after that, his house was baptized after they believed. You can read the rest of the chapter. There's no fire. There's no fire. You can read the rest of the chapter. Don't I mean? Don't take my word for it. John one twenty six. John one twenty six. John answered him, saying, I baptize you with water. For there is standing one, um, one among you whom I know not. That's baptism in the Bible. There is a heresy of baptism I taught you out of the Bible. Properly, baptism today for a, is for a believer. Never a, a non-believer. He must profess Jesus Christ as his Savior. And if he doesn't, and he's baptized, and he dies with the faith in his baptism, he will get the baptism of fire. And if you proclaim to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and of fire, I don't know if you believe it or not, but your salvation is issue washing. But if you have not believed on Jesus, you are not baptized with the Holy Ghost, you're going to be baptized with fire. If you believe on Jesus Christ, and you think you're going to get the baptism of fire, you've lied to yourself, and you lied to the Scriptures. That's baptism. And again, John the Baptist, I've heard this one, you can trace the Baptist all the way back to John the Baptist. He died before Jesus died. Right. Lord God the Father, thank you for the truth. Lord God, if I offended anybody, I don't care. I've read the scriptures. You know where my conviction is. You know where I lie about witnessing and the false witnessing and easy believism. They are a lie of the damnation of hell. We need the gospel. We need the preaching. And we need the word of God for somebody to believe. And we need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ long before we are baptized. Baptism can't save you. Only by the salvation and belief of the finished work of Jesus are we saved. Thank you for this time, Lord God. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen.